Move this stuff out of the way. Now this is how you maintain a knife. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Lockdown Knife Week is continuing for yet another week as by popular demand. Thank you guys for all voting in that poll over on Instagram. And today we're gonna switch things up just a little bit. Now this isn't really meant to be an instructional video. I'm not gonna show you like in depth on how to sharpen knives. There is plenty of good information out there on the internet right now if you want to learn more about that. I will, however, go over a few different sharpening systems. We'll talk about oiling and greasing pivots and things like that. At the end of the day though, knives are just tools and they really don't require all that much maintenance. If you can put an edge on it, keep that thing sharp, keep it cleaned and oiled, then that's pretty much all you really need to do. Now before we head back to the workbench where I have everything set up already, let's check out the hashtag for today. This photo right here really caught my attention simply because it's a killer photo. This one is coming from Everlasting Ember and he has a Benchmade North Fork here. I picked this photo simply because it's a really good shot. It's like golden hour, you got really good lighting. The wooden handles on the knife slammed into a log that has moss growing all over it. It's just really cool. So awesome photo, dude. Thank you for the submission. And if you guys want to be featured in an upcoming video, you can still use the hashtag down here and I'll continue picking one or two photos every day. So with all of that out of the way, let's head back to the workbench and talk about knife maintenance. All right guys, here we go. By the end of this week, every single folding knife in my collection will have a dedicated video of it here on the channel. These two are the exceptions. I figured I would include these in the sharpening video, that way you guys can see a little bit of everything out of my collection. So here on the left, I have a Spyderco Delica 4. This is a plain edge blade. It's actually decently sharp right now, but that'll probably change throughout this video. Lock back design, FRN handles, cool little blade, really easy to recommend for someone who's looking at getting into carrying a knife every single day. And then we have this one right here, the oldest knife in my collection. It's sort of like a camp spoon that used to be my dad's a long time ago. I don't know where it came from really. I remember it always being in our tool chest though, out in the garage. This is an old colonial blade. It's obviously seen some better days. I could probably put an edge on it during this video. So we got a fork, a spoon, a knife, and a can opener. This is one that will always remain in my collection. So now we're gonna use these two blades as an example when using these sharpeners today. I have my preferred method of sharpening blades now. However, we're gonna start from some of the cheapest options out there and then slowly work our way up to things that get a little bit more expensive all the way up until like the grand finale, the biggest thing. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So first up, a really simple way to keep an edge on a blade is using a little pocket tool like this right here. This one is coming from CRKT. It actually includes little torque bits on here. It's basically like a multi-tool. You got a bottle opener, a little flathead here, which you can screw things and pry with. You could actually swap these bits out if you wanna have something different with you. Folds up nicely, keep it on your keychain, cool. Now we're gonna focus on these little bits down in here. Right here we have a sort of a carbide sharpener and then on this side, a ceramic sharpener. A tool like this is really just used to kind of sharpen things up on the go. I really don't like using the carbide section here. I'll show you why. I'll pull out this blade, which has a very rough edge on it as it is. Push you guys in a little bit. These are angled in a way that it will put that angle right onto your edge. So you basically just hold this thing steady and pull the blade through it. Now I'm not using a whole lot of force here. I'm really just kind of using the weight of the knife and pulling it through nice and slow like that. Once you get rid of any nicks or imperfections in the blade, then you can switch over to the ceramic side and this will sort of put a finished edge on it. The problem with the carbide side is that this takes off a lot of material, so I would be careful doing this with any kind of knife that is expensive or something that you actually care about. So I'll flip it over to this side and simply run it through a few times like that. 
this knife has definitely seen better days, but that would technically put an edge on your blade and keep it sharp enough to cut things if you're out on the go and you just really need a quick edge. Now these tools are made by pretty much everyone nowadays. Here I have one from WorkSharp. WorkSharp makes a lot of different sharpeners and they're probably most well known for their electric sharpeners, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. This one right here is a Benchmade version. You can probably already tell by the Benchmade-esque pocket clip. It's like a deep carry pocket clip and you could actually keep this thing with you in your pocket if you choose to. Now this one is a little bit different coming with just a ceramic stone here which you can actually rotate if it gets a little dirty or worn out. And then on this side here we have sort of a leather strop. Now the way this one works is a little bit different. It has the angles set right here on these little plastic pieces. So to use a sharpener like this, you simply lay the blade flat on there. That way it holds an angle. You want to keep that angle consistent and then slowly work that edge across the ceramic. Now you really wanna do this while alternating sides, making even strokes across the tip. Again, this is not really an instructional video, just showing you guys some options out there. So after a little while, you'll see some metal wearing on the ceramic there and you have an edge that was a little bit better than before. You can also come over here and strop this thing basically in the same manner. Hold that blade on the guide there and simply pull it across. So those are two easy ways to sharpen when you are out on the go. It'll work for whatever you need it to, I guess. And those are just good pocketable options. Now we'll move on to another system that I've used for quite a while. And this was probably the first like good sharpener that I ever invested in. This is coming from Smith's. These are also made by a lot of different companies like Spyderco and Lansky, a bunch of different people out there. Underneath this cover here, we have a little diamond plate. This one has a groove if you wanna sharpen like fish hooks or anything like that. And then right here, we have the same carbide type of blades that you have on this little pocket sharpener right here. And then stored underneath, we have some ceramic rods. As you can tell, I have used this one quite a lot. This was like the first sharpener that I ever bought. And then you can actually position these rods into this device depending on what you wanna do. You have a round surface right here, flat surface on this side, and then you also have a grooved surface over here. So I typically use the rounded side. You simply slip them into place right like this. The fit is honestly kind of tight but that is what it will look like when they're in place and this is what gives you your sharpening angle. Now the way you would use something like this is pretty simple, self-explanatory. For a really bad edge, you could use the carbide section right here. These are actually swappable. You can pop those out and sort of like flip them around if they get dull. And then once you get a decent edge on there, you can move over to the diamond stone right here. You'll wanna find your angle and sharpen like normal. Once you're satisfied with that, then you can move on to the ceramic. It's a good idea to actually replace this little cover here. It slips into the notch and it gives you a little bit of a hand guard. So I will hold on to it just like this here. And then I'll want to hold the knife at a 90 degree angle, basically perpendicular with the table, and then simply run it down each side of the ceramic. So if you're going with a cheaper option that you're gonna keep at home on your workbench or anything, I would recommend something like this over these smaller pocket tools. You can probably get a little bit better of a edge out of something like this. They're inexpensive and if you put in the time and effort with them, they actually end up getting pretty sharp. Now you'll probably notice me saying this for the rest of this video, but obviously, the more time and effort that you put into sharpening a blade, the better it's going to end up being. There is a little bit of a skill curve that you'll encounter when learning how to sharpen knives, and this is a pretty quick and easy way to learn. You could also damage a blade pretty quickly, so just kind of watch a lot of videos, take some notes, and again, there's a lot of good information out there that you can find on the internet right now. Now, I'm gonna set this blade to the side for now, and we'll work our way up into the possibly better options, a little bit more expensive, and you can probably work a better edge onto a blade with these sharpening systems. We're moving up to something like this Lansky sharpening system right here. This is another very popular option, relatively inexpensive for what it is, but this one will take a little bit more time, practice, patience. It's gonna take a little bit more know-how than some of these other options out there, but you can put a really nice edge on a blade with something as simple as this. So in this kit, you get a few different stones, a mounting lock, you get oil actually, and then the rods. I also opted for this little stand right here, which will make your life a lot easier. So for this one, I guess we will try to touch up the edge on this Delica real quick. 
So in order to use this thing, you simply take this little mounting jaw right here. I'll place it onto its stand, just like that. Now I'll take the knife and position it in the jaws of this clamp here. Here I can actually use a little flathead on this CRKT tool, to tighten this screw down now. Now once you get that screw snugged down a little bit, the actual knife position in these jaws, it's probably going to affect the way the edge is going to come out. This is something that takes a little bit of fine tuning and eventually once you keep resharpening the same knife, you'll want to like write all that info down, that way you can do it quick and easy. For this example though, I'm just gonna throw it in there like this and then turn this little red screw and now this thing is firmly locked into place. Now you'll notice these little markings on the side here of these holes, we got 17, 20, 25, and 30, and this will actually dictate the angle that you're putting on this edge. So here are some of the sharpening options. We have an extra coarse stone, which is way too coarse for anything like this. And then we have all the way up to yet another ceramic stone. This one is obviously well used as well. Since the edge on here is not too bad, I'll probably just start with this right here, a 600 fine stone. Now a tip for using a sharpener like this is also the way you position the rod in the actual stone. The way I do it is I insert the rod just like this and you want this thing to be as flat as possible in line with the actual sharpening edge. So I'll lay this on a very flat surface. Make sure that this rod is not bent at all. If you get a rod that is bent, let me actually pull one out to show you. If you have one like this right here that is bent, you'll sort of hear it like tapping around on the table. You can actually tell that that is not straight at all. So what you wanna do is set this thing completely flat, make sure it's held down, and then actually straighten it out. This one right here is already very straight, probably haven't used this exact rod already. So there you can tell it is not making any noise. Once that thing is set in place, tighten it down and you're good to go. Now for the way you actually sharpen this thing, you will want to put the end of the rod in whichever degree angle you want to put on this blade. It's going to be a little bit hard to do on camera, however. And then just use some very light pressure, almost no pressure at all, and basically just using the weight of this up against the edge of the blade. And I'll simply run it along right like this. There we go, that's a little easier. Now for the other side, you simply lift it off its stand, flip it around. Put the rod back in the 20 degree hole and I'll do the reverse side. Now just like any sharpening system, you will want to work your way up to the finest grit that you probably have. Now with a freehand system like this, you do want to be careful of how you're pulling this stone over the tip of the blade. It's very easy to mess up something like this. It's not a huge deal. You can always reprofile a knife and fix it later. However, you can only sharpen a knife so many times before you actually take away a lot of metal and it really changes the shape of the blade. So there you go, just a really quick way of sharpening. You can spend a lot of time using a system like this though and you can put a really good edge on the blade. I used this thing for years and this is how I was sharpening my knives for a long time until somewhat recently, probably, I don't know, maybe six months ago, I invested in the next system that we're gonna take a look at. This is the final one. It is super expensive. This is something that like professional knife sharpeners will use and again, this is not an instructional video. However, I do want to show you the Wicked Edge. I'll just move this stuff out of the way. Now this is how you maintain a knife. All right, so here we have the Wicked Edge Gen 3 Pro Sharpener. I've shown this in a mail time video. I actually did a live stream a little while ago showing how to use this thing start to finish. We actually put an edge on the blade. And if you missed that live stream, I recommend subscribing to the channel and turning notifications on so you guys can catch stuff like that in the future. Now this is arguably one of the best ways to sharpen a knife out there. Granted, very expensive system here, but if this is something that you do all the time, if you're constantly using knives and you have a collection like mine, something that you're actually passionate about, maybe this is something that you would find worthwhile to invest in. Now, before I get into demoing this, I do want to mention electric sharpeners, something like WorkSharp makes. That would be another system similar to something like this. 
However, I would not recommend running a high-end knife through an electric sharpener. You're just not gonna get the same control out of a system like this. You're not going to get as good of an edge out of something like this. And you could actually risk damaging a blade very easily. Electric sharpeners are fast and they're good for putting edges on knives that are tools. Yes, like I mentioned in the beginning, all knives are just tools. However, if I have a $500 knife, chances are I don't wanna run that thing through an electric sharpener and risk damaging that thing. So that being said, this in my opinion is like the end all be all sharpener. It'll do everything that you want it to do. And you could even open like a professional knife sharpening business with a system like this. So that being said, how does it work? Similar to the Lansky system with these jaws right here, the jaws are mounted into this rig right up top. Over on the side here, you have a little tool which will actually fit into the jaws. And this will allow you to position the blade accordingly. Again, like I mentioned with the previous system, this is something where you can actually write down measurements and get very, very precise when it comes to sharpening these blades. So once I find out the perfect way to sharpen in this exact knife right here, Delica 4, I'll then write all that information down. That way I can replicate this again in the future. So for this blade in particular, I'll probably put that little key right in the top of the jaws there. Insert the blade, eh, probably something like this. And then I will pull this lever right here to lock down on that knife. Now you wanna be a little bit careful while you're doing this because you can definitely mark up the blade. I've done this when sharpening my black coated bug out. You can see the nice marks at the jaws left on the blade there. So definitely be careful when doing that. This thing also has so many adjustments. You can actually adjust how hard that is holding the blade down. If you have something with a really thick blade, you can adjust it accordingly. However, I have this thing set up to work for basically any folding knife that I have been sharpening. Down here, we have a bunch of storage to keep all your different stones. I have everything from 100 all the way up to 3000 grit and then I even have a glass stone right here. So this is not a stone, it's really just a piece of glass mounted on here. And then you can take lapping film like this right here. I have three micron lapping film. These are actually stickers that you can stick to this glass and that is how you get that wicked edge. You can get a mirror polish on a lot of different knives and it is hands down one of the best ways to sharpen. So right up here you have guide rods, which I'm going to be using to sort of swing along the edge of the blade here, right like this. Let me position this a little bit better. Now there's a few different tips and tricks you can use when sharpening a knife on a system like this. Wicked Edge has a lot of good info in their included like little manual. They have videos out online. There are forums where people will actually give you the measurements to position a blade and what different things that they're using to get the most out of a system like this. This is just gonna be a super quick demo and I'm probably not gonna put the best edge on this thing. So I'll remove that little key. And now I keep a Sharpie in that sharpening box that this thing comes in because I'm going to actually mark this blade. So for the anatomy of a blade like this, we have the heel back here, we have the belly of the blade, and then we have the tip. On the top part there, we have what we call the edge, and then just down a little bit from there where the flat grind of this blade starts, that is going to be called the shoulder. So I'm going to take a Sharpie marker just like this. The tip of this is actually split because what I do is Put it right on the edge of the blade here and run it down the entire length, marking it. Now it might be a little bit hard to tell on camera, but I can see sort of a very faint layer of Sharpie on there. So I will know if I do take any material off of it. Now, since the edge on this knife is really not all that bad right now, I'm gonna start with a pretty fine grit. I guess we'll start with the 800 sides of these. Now down on the bottom here, you'll notice a bunch of different measurements. I can swing this thing all the way in to about a 14 degree angle, which is going to be very, very acute. Or I can swing it all the way out to widen it up, and then you're going to get an edge that will take a little bit more abuse. I don't really know the exact settings that I should be running for a blade like this. I don't even think this is actually positioned right, which we'll actually check here in a second. So I'm gonna keep it pretty neutral and just put it at about 20 degrees. Now you can actually alter the angle a little bit more with these little dials right down here. You can spin these arms in and out to get a very, very precise edge. But then again, this isn't really an instructional video. I'm just showing you how it works. So what I wanna do now is take each of these stones and using very, very light pressure. I'm really just using the weight of these. I'll rest it up against the edge of the blade there and slowly run it across. 
Now I'm inspecting this edge very closely over here. I'm not sure if this will show up on video, but we'll do it over here on this side. I'm doing a few passes on each side and then I'm taking note of how I am removing material from this edge. From here, it looks like I'm just taking a little bit off of the actual edge of this blade and the shoulder remains untouched. I'm gonna give it a few more passes. So it actually looks like this is positioned pretty well. However, I believe it could move a little bit forward. If marker is being removed from the shoulder at the heel and on the edge at the tip, then the knife is probably too far back. So what I wanna do is put my little guide back in here and I'm actually gonna position this thing just a little bit further forward. Another thing this key is good for is actually measuring right here. So I have a little guide. I can put that in place and then if this is right for the future, I will mark about B1. So I'll put the tip right in the same position and then that is a good way to keep your measurements for the future. So I'll try this now, a few more passes. It looks like the angle on here was a little bit less than the 20 that I'm sharpening it at right now. So I'll bump this thing in a little bit at 19. And I can already tell on the right side over here that this is looking really good. So once I see that the marker is being removed appropriately, I will simply sharpen one side. I'll create a little bit of a burr and then I'll come across this side, push that burr back to the other side. And now I will use alternate passes. Now you don't need to go too crazy with this. So I'm gonna flip these over. The tip could probably use a little work, but I'll do that later. Moving up to a thousand now. Move up to 1500. Flip over to 22. Now this is where you'll start to get that mirror edge on there, but there's more we can do. Move up to 3000 now. And real quick, we'll flip over to the glass with the three micron stickers on here. So there you guys have a really quick edge. Typically, if I was putting like a really nice edge on here, I would spend at least 30 minutes doing this. However, for this purpose, this should be good enough for now. I'll try to check that edge out up close. You can sort of tell that mirror polish was starting to show through. Again, I really need to touch this up, but we'll do a quick cut test. That thing is insanely sharp. You can basically push cut through something like this. And that's how you sharpen it. Now the final thing to talk about, different lubrications for knife pivots and things like that. If you ask me, I'm gonna be straight up honest with you and say this doesn't really matter to me all that much. Lately, I've been using this stuff right here called Shank Shield. A company called Extent Labs sent this to my PO box. You may have seen me open it in the mail time. They sent me a lot of it and this is what I've been using. It's nice because it comes in a little syringe and you can use this very fine tip here to actually get deep down inside a knife pivot. I can actually slide it right between the scales of this Delica here. Give it a tiny little press. This thing really doesn't need to be oiled, but work that into the pivot and there you go. But like I said, this doesn't really matter to me. I've used stuff like CLP right here, stuff that you would clean like a firearm with, gun care, whatever. BWL, extreme weapon lubricant. I don't even know where I got half of this stuff. You could really use even like vegetable oil or something like that. Basically, oil is going to keep a blade with a lesser steel from rusting. For something like an SE fixed blade, like I reviewed last week, that I always like to keep a thin layer of oil on it, something like this or whatever I have laying around. But as long as you keep your knife clean and dry after you've been using it for whatever kind of wet things you're doing, you make sure you throw a little bit of oil on that blade in the pivot and on the actual edge afterwards and your knife should be good to go. So that's pretty much it for this video on knife maintenance. Hopefully you guys learned something. Again, I'm no expert when it comes to a lot of this stuff. However, I've been around the block a time or two and I know what works for me. I will try to leave any relevant links in the description down below if you saw anything that you might want to pick up. And other than that, I will be back with a new Lockdown Knife Week video tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. So if you are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week and every day for this week, Lockdown Knife Week. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.